Hello, I'm Edward Tart, math teacher. I have been playing around with numbers and I have made a discovery that I would like to share with you. And after I share it with you, I will offer you a challenge of figuring out why it works. Here's my discovery. I start with three numbers. In this example, I will start with 3, 5, and 11. I square each of them, that means I multiply each by itself, and I get 9, 25, and 121. I add the two smaller numbers, 9 and 25, and I get 34. I then subtract 121 minus 34, which gives me 87. I set that number aside, and now I'm going to try to get that same number 87 by a different method. I now take the largest of the three numbers, 3, 5, and 11, that's 11, and add it to one of the smaller numbers. It doesn't matter which one. I will add 11 to the 3, which gives me 14. And I take the 14 and the other number of the three numbers, 5, 14 and 5, I square each of them. 14 squared is 196. 5 squared is 25. I add those. 196 plus 25 is 221. Then I take the 14 and 5 again. And now I take the 3 and the 5 and I double each of them, making 6 and 10. I then multiply the 14 times the 6 and the 5 times the 10, which gives me 84 and 50. I add the 84 and 50 and I get 134. I then subtract 221 minus 134 and I get 87 again. That's the same number I got by the first method. If you're interested, I suggest that you try this with three numbers of your own choosing. But now my challenge is show why this works. I'm going to show the solution here in this video instead of showing it in a separate video as I have done in most of my other math challenges. So if you are interested in working on this challenge, I suggest that you stop this video now and when you're ready, watch my solution, which follows. Here's my solution to show how this works. I call my three numbers A, B, and C, with C being the largest. So the number that I'm setting aside is C squared minus the sum of A squared and B squared which could also be expressed as c squared minus a squared minus b squared. Now in my second sequence, to get the same result, I take c plus a, that's the 11 plus 3, squared, plus b squared, minus 2a, which is that 6, times c plus a, which is the 14, plus 2b, which is the 10, times b, which is the 5. So we have c plus a squared plus b squared minus 2a times c plus a plus 2b times b. Multiplying that out gives c squared plus 2ac plus a squared plus b squared minus 2ac minus 2a squared minus 2b squared. The plus 2ac and the minus 2ac add up to zero, so they disappear, and when I simplify that expression, I end up with c squared minus a squared minus b squared which is the same as I got up above. So that shows algebraically why this works. You may wonder what led me to make this discovery. Well, this is actually a mixture of algebra and geometry. 
In the classroom and in my private math tutoring, I have taught high school students that if you have a circle with center at the origin and radius r, its equation is based on the Pythagorean equation for right triangles, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if the center of the circle is not at the origin, but the center has coordinates h, k, then to have the correct equation of the circle, you replace x by x minus h, and you replace y by y minus k. So you have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. If we multiply that out, we get x squared minus 2xh plus h squared plus y squared minus 2yk plus k squared equals r squared. And if you subtract h squared and k squared from both sides of that equation, you get this bottom equation, and in it you may be able to see the elements of my discovery. So that may give you an idea of how I discovered the essence of this video. Thank you for watching this video.